Welcome, I am Eric Burns and I am here to present to you the 2017 North American Auto Club Season Preview. We are in a, a couple of weeks from the start of the season and just like last year, the Great Ball Challenge Series, the flagship tour of NAC, is set to kick off in Florida, but we have big, big changes this season, starting by the cars themselves. After more than 10 years with the old bodies and engines, a project started around 2012, five years ago, for a new generation composite body and engine displacements that will be rolled out starting this season. You are seeing them on your screen. These cars are boxier than the previous ones, and with one very glaring change is since we have this new engine package, the filter no longer pops up through the hood which is now safer it makes for a very much safer car a bigger car also which was a very big complaint from fans cars were far smaller than the tracks they were running on and it felt dissonant with the series and that does not mean the car is still isn't affordable it's still a very affordable composite car and engine for both big and small teams this allows for the extended fields we're gonna see throughout this season and beyond However, that's not the only thing changing for the upcoming season as the point system has also been revamped, adapted to long drawn battles across the season, but still giving a bigger value to victories. As you're going to see on your screen, the winner now receives 40 points and then second place gets 35. From second to 36, the points go down in increments of one point, with last place getting a single point. Pole position will earn 8 points, the bonuses get extended out to the 5th best car in qualifying who will get a single point, while leading a lap will net you 4 points and leading the most laps nets you 8, meaning the biggest possible points haul in a given weekend is 60 points. Uh, however, of course, the points will be doubled for these special events, the 5 special events we're gonna get this season, and as one of those events has an extended field, the winner will get 80 points, second place 70, and then it's gonna go down to 33rd place in increments of 2 points per position. And then from 34th to 40th, the gap is a single point per each position until 40th place earns a single point. Whoever has the best average finish across all of the Faye Legacy Crown events which you are seeing across your screen will earn 100 bonus points, which can make or break a championship run. And with the final race so near the championship finale, this really can shape a championship up. And as you see, the types of tracks we'll be running, street courses, purpose-built road courses, short tracks, super speedway, those will be very exciting races to watch. The Rookie of the Year battle will also be changed as often not all rookies will run against each other in the field which means an alternate system had to be developed with the cumulative power ranking index which will be a mathematical formula to carry on across the season it is not very complicated essentially it, whatever you bring as points through a race will be divided by your finishing position so for example if you finish first in a special event you bring 80 points but if you finish uh, in second you will only bring 35 in a special event which means winning it is gonna be valued above all else. The higher you finish, the more points you're gonna bring out in the index. So in this format, starting a race won't be enough. You will need to finish as high as possible to win the award. Uh, however, that battle is not gonna carry across the whole season. It's gonna carry until the Samson Spark Plugs Rookie Showcase in Talladega in the championship weekend. Which means the final race of the year, the TriHard 500, will not be a Rookie of the Year uh, eligible race. With these details worked out, it's time to meet the dates and tracks of the 2017 North American Auto Club Grip All Challenge Series season. We begin the season under the Floridian Lights at Lakeland, Florida with the USA International Speedway and the Sunshine State 200. Then we move to, North Car to South Carolina for the Coralist 150 and the Columbia Speedway in Case. And then the first road course event of the year, once again, Lime Rock Park, 1.5 miles, 100 miles in a very short but twisting and winding circuit, which can promise a very fun race. 
The first Legacy Cup event takes place in the New York Auto Ring together with the PCC Cup Series drivers and cars. It's a 400km race, the E400, where Mayhem will be one inch away from glory. Right after that, the North American Auto Club continues to follow the PCC Cup Series trail at Carbondale with the Errata Cab 125 and then at the Milwaukee Mile with the Save Me Bargain Stores Classic, which is just which the track, the Milwaukee Mile, is only an hour away from Road America where PCC will be running uh, with all its three series. After that, it's time for the Minnesota State Fairgrounds that becomes part of the schedule for the first time with a 200 lap race and then the Ohio Motor Speedway for what is now one of the staples of the North American Auto Club schedule, the Energuice 250. Another introduction to the North American Auto Club schedule are the Swing Weekends where from Friday to Sunday, North American Auto Club teams will run shorter races in one day shows, however, in three different circuits each day. The first of those is the Master Spark Northeastern Blast with Boston, Waterbury and Ocean State Speedway being the tracks visited and, in, and this is going to be the only cross-state swing weekend of the year. All the other weekends that, ha that have this format will be in a single state only. This time around, in this first one will be Massachusetts, Connecticut and Rhode Island. The Canadian leg of the season kicks off at the refurbished Four Corners Speedway of Toronto, followed by the Trois Revere Circuit for the Ohio Grand Prix, the second Legacy Crown event. And closing up the trip up the border will be the shortest track of the season, three eighths of a mile in Autodrome Montmagny in Quebec. And then the third event of the Prestige Crown is right after that, the Empire State Road Race, a 64 lap endurance challenge at the historical Watkins Glen International Raceway, a very fast circuit, it promises a fantastic event. After that, what we can claim is the most unique track of the season, the big left turn, one mile Langhorn Speedway. 150 laps, it has to be a very fun race, only 30 laps across the whole weekend. The second swing of the year happens in Tennessee with three short tracks making part of the Cipriani Clash, Bristol Motor, Bristol Motor Speedway, Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway and the Memphis Motorsports Park. From Tennessee, we head to Indiana for the final Legacy Cup event, the Hoosier Classic by Oasis in the Indianapolis Raceway Park. Just. Uh, in the same city as PCC runs its Indianapolis weekend. 100 points are in the line for the winner of the Fay Legacy Cup. This will definitely be a taste of what we can get in the championship finale. After that, the second to last swing weekend of the season, the C99, the C9 Antifreeze 99 Challenge. Three 99 lap races in three widely different circuits. Chicagoland Speedway, where these guys can actually try to run around full throttle. And then the Illinois State Fairgrounds, where it's gonna get dirty for the only time in the season, the only dirt event of the year. And to close it off, a short track clash at the Grand Detour Raceway, where surviving will be the key to winning. The final road course event of the year will be that the longest track in the season, Road America Nelkart Lake, Wisconsin, 225 kilometers, 35 laps, that can really make a difference in the championship battle. The final swing weekend is also the last one before championship week, and as is the series tradition, it will be held in Texas, across three super speedways, the D-shaped Texas World Speedway, the Quad Oval Texas Motor Speedway, and the egg-shaped Houston Super Speedway, the Lone Star Supercell. And the final weekend of the season will be, as always, in the Talladega Super Speedway. In it, three very important events will be contested. First, the Samson Spark Plugs Rookie Showcase, the final race of the year to win the Rookie of the Year award. That's where that battle will be decided. And then the qualifying process for the final race of the year will begin and it will conclude with the B main events, where 64 cars, the 64 that survived through the alphabet soup qualifying, will have a last scrap that could put them in championship contention, the Marlisle duels. And to close the season off, 40 cars, the largest field of the season, up, up, one, up to 120 cars contesting qualifying for what is the crown jewel of the North American Auto Club. The winner will gain automatic entry to the PCC Cup Series Cleveland Grand Prix. It is the silver anniversary, the 25th, 
running of the Try Hard 500. The race that will decide the championship. Now, let's see the competitors that will make this calendar and race system possible. Here are the 2017 North American Auto Club Grand Paul Challenge Series cars and drivers. And we start, of course, by numerical order. Torgerson Racing, the winners of the 2017 Try Hard 500 and last year's Rookie of the Year award, come back for a full-time season assault with big funding from Corliss and multiple other con companies making this zero car full of very good stickers. HQS Racing did not have as good of a season last year as they went uncharacteristically winless throughout the whole circuit. Caitlin Richler leads the assault once again, followed by Riley McKee, who also contests the full season, while Lexi Percy and Emily Pauvin, the British and French, will only run part of the 2017 season. Speed Enterprises returns with rookie Kira Downer in the number 3 for 12 events, with a second car coming around for the following races. Uh, we don't have an announcement on who will be driving that second car. Ronnie Samples enters the fray with the number 7 smash burger Monte Carlo. He has driven in North American Auto Club racing before, but never for his own team as he's doing this year. Matt Stern and Marcus Stanton own S2 Motorsports, the team with the largest lineup in the whole series. They have six cars running at some events as 2015 champion Mac Hanley and Cornelia Brooks drive the full-time cars with Joey Sinclair, Alexis Women. Oli Sandel Nolan and Andrew Atwood joining in the other four cars. Ashcroft Family Racing, the longest running team in the series in North American Auto Club since its foundation, enters their title defense with Thomas Tucker who broke through to win his first race last year and defending series champion Kelly Ashcroft with Boyd Abbott making his series debut in the number 91. Zach Tack joins the North American Auto Club with two cars, but their full-time assault will be with Blake Chandler in the number 03. Pete Williams Motorsports acquired a lot of sponsorship late last year, and with David Lamar and Jimmy Frazier contesting multiple events this season, this will be a team to look out for, if not at the front, in the back. Patterson Racing returns as Adam Patterson comes for his sophomore season after a disastrous rookie year while Jack Patterson continues to contest just a few races in his goodbye tour for the series, which goes until next year. Triumph Motorsports, who set the world on fire last year but sputtered out throughout the season, brings the same lineup for 2017. Brad Finley in the 15th full-time, while the colors are reversed for Bobby Savage's number 51. Road racer Jennifer Irving tries her hand at oval racing, joining for a Rookie of the Year assault part-time in 2017 in that unsponsored 19 car. Another of the more traditional teams in North American Auto Club, Overton Motorsports, comes back with the championship winning lineup of Kirk Jones, full time in the 32, and Robert Burton in the part time 23. While Scotty Overton, the youngest of the three Overton siblings, with Paul and Michelle being the, old, being the elders, running the Canadian events in the 62 Master File car. Luke Star Motorsports is essentially Ernest Lewis Racing's B team and they come with eternal bridesmaid Rebecca Pellerin who has driven so well but never won the whole enchilada and her brother Luke Pellerin on the 88 car while short track veteran Kate Taylor continues in the Taylor Candy number 25. CJK Racing the back markers that have endeared everyone in the garage returns with Canadian Kristen Young in the number 33 full-time with Aussie Tegan Robertson in the 36 and Rick Martin continuing to make select starts in the 40 car as his late model schedule allows. Ernest Lewis Racing, another of the big five teams in the series, is back for more as for the second straight time they have finished second in the standings. In 2015 it was with Rebecca Pellerin, last year with Jamal Schmidt. The brothers Lee Schmidt in the 43 and Jamal Schmidt in the 55 lead the charge with British Mega McDonald in the third car for the team, the 34, as all cars don the Napa colors. Kane Hughes Racing in the number 52 will make a full-time assault with Japanese driver Ibiki Murata. You can see by the stickers plastered all over the Panasonic Honda 52 the justification to bringing her in for a full-time Rookie of the Year assault. 
The White Johnson Racing returns with new sponsors as Ashley Richardson and Lucas Calhoun bring in Prison River and Matusek to the 58 and 59 cars. Expansion Motorsports is one of the weirder stories this season as Extends bordered that team quite aggressively late last year with Peter Johnson and Creeper Stevenson making their way into the field in the 69 and 420 cars running partial seasons uh, and two more cars could be running select events later on. Dan Wright finds himself in the Polymer Oil 71 after being released from his Expansion Motorsports contract and he now hopes his new home may bring greener pastures. Shield Motorsports is a staple of the midfield and they return once again with Ruby Carson and Corbin Dempsey full time while Lucia Harper, the only other funded car of that team, running select events in the number 79. Another new team to the series is Charlie Faulkner Racing as Charlie Faulkner himself will make an assault for Rookie of the Year in the Red 85 contesting the whole season while Ryan Faulkner will run part-time in the 89 blue car also going for the Rookie of the Year award. Nelson Racing is another of the bigger and more traditional teams in the series. Though they fell on hard knocks in the last couple of years, Lucy Barton, they building for them in the 98 car, can bring a new era, a resurgence for that team. As in part-time schedules, Swede rally driver Stan Gustafsson and British road racer Tony Hart are flanked by Mexican stock car driver Rafael Molina. And last but not least by any means is another new team entering the series, David Tyner Motorsports in the 200 flat cola car driven by rookie Kip Lemon. With that, this is the lineup for the 2017 North American Auto Club Grip All Challenge Series, the premier championship in the North American Auto Club hierarchy. We hope you've enjoyed this showcase of what the 2017 season of the North American Auto Club will entail and we expect you to be ready for the first event of the year coming up shortly, the Sunshine State 200 kicking off festivities in Lakeland, Florida. I'll see you next time.